Hi Thomas. Yeah. Hi. Okay. Hi everybody. Uh, thanks for joining us this evening again for our Fujifilm uh, live broadcast. So tonight, uh, I have with me Thomas Kuhn, uh, as photographer from Malaysia. Hi. And we are going to share with you guys some uh, thoughts and some insight about travel photography when we travel. So uh, between Thomas and myself, I guess we also travel a lot for you know street uh, travel photography. But tonight, probably we do more about street. Um, so maybe maybe Thomas, you can share with us uh, maybe just short intro of yourself because uh, maybe some of the guys here might not be very familiar with you. So maybe just a, a short introduction about yourself. Okay. Uh, good, good evening. So uh, welcome to tonight's session that uh, uh, first time we do a joint session with uh, Fujifilm Singapore. And, yeah, uh, yeah, excited. Uh, yeah, I'm excited. Uh, uh, with uh, William. So I just do a little bit of uh, in, uh, introduce myself with a few pictures. Okay. I, uh, so uh, my name is Thomas Poon. I'm a Malaysian. Uh, Malaysia ex photographer for Fujifilm. Okay. Uh, actually, my work is mainly with uh, in black and white photography. I like to do uh, documentary and some travel photography, and uh, those are some uh, um, my sponsors in throughout the years. That uh, after I actually uh, quite active in uh, photography in Malaysia. So what do I do? Uh, most of the time, uh, this is actually my first uh, documentary project in Cambodia, which I shot. I shot the uh, uh, people staying alongside the uh, railway tracks in Phnom Penh, Cambodia. Okay, so some uh, documentary photos. I like to shoot children also. Okay, so um, this is the uh, uh, photos that I uh, I did. Okay, in year two thousand. 13 and 2014. Uh, in two years, I traveled to this place for five to six times uh, to just take photo of this the people down here. Okay, so this is my first ever uh, project or I can say a documentary series. Mm, and then uh, some some other times, if I have, I'm traveling, I have some spare time. I do like to take some uh, so-called fine arts thing also. Some long exposures, okay. okay. Yeah. Photograph, photograph in uh, most of the uh, long exposures uh, are do in Malaysia because uh, uh, we have very uh, beautiful coastline. And this is my second uh, project also did in Cambodia during 2014. Okay, this is near uh, Samrat, okay, the uh, international travel, uh, so-called tourism city, uh, where we uh, stay there to go into Angkor Wat. So and basically, it, to us, we do a lot of travel and documentary photography also, right? Yeah, yeah. Actually, this, uh, 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 we consider this is street also, because uh, there's no uh, exactly de definition of street photography. It's right. just Street photography doesn't mean that you need to shoot on the street, okay? It's something like you just go to a public area or you just walk out from your home, okay? It's considered street photography, right? That's so really this is a uh, rubbish dump site uh, 30 kilometers away from Samrep, okay? Those, uh, people, they are uh, digging those uh, rubbish uh, to try to find metals to resell, okay? This uh, the, the, the how do you they work other the yeah. people here? Yeah. 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 Yes, for you are right. For street photography, basically mm. no clear definition, I mean, it's mm. something that you know, whatever, mm. when, especially when you travel, right? We like to take photos. Yeah. We see, mm. uh, it's all you know, street photography. Uh, is whether you know what our different style is. Like some people like to shoot in a way that is more uh, journalistic. Some people mm. like to you know post them a bit more. Uh, uh -huh. I guess right or wrong also. Uh, but yeah. really. So individual style and things right. like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. it depends. Uh, it depends on what you like, right? Yeah. yeah. So, see, so, so I normally I don't know I I I don't post them. I just uh go, go go in there to be uh something like an observer. I look uh, yeah. 
uh, what uh, their life starts and stick some pictures right. to just supplement uh, on those things. Okay, so this is actually uh, what I do most of the time. Okay. So maybe Thomas, you can show us uh, uh, just a few pictures uh, of your uh, the project to see how uh, maybe share some of your thoughts and uh, ideas about some of the street photography style that you have. Um. Okay. So let's go back to the slide and uh, um, here. Okay. So uh, when I go travel, actually, uh, mm -hmm. this uh, photo was shot in Egypt. This is the camel market. Okay. So um, actually, the main uh, objective of travel to Egypt, I like to shoot some. Uh, stories that I want. Okay, um, so this is some uh, some uh, so called spare time that uh, during the tra uh, travel from one town to the other. So uh, we go. Hey, I, cannot, uh, <laughs> I cannot list it. Are you sharing the Egypt photos yet? Yeah, uh, you can't see. Yeah. Okay, let me. Share the screen again. Mm -hmm. Okay. So can you see? Yep, can see the photos. Okay, so this is the uh uh, uh photo that I took okay in the uh camera markets. All right. Uh so we we'll just look around and observe what's happening when we travel and we look at uh, the culture over there and of course uh, do do find some uh, special angle or whatever to, to uh, do some street shot and of course this is in egypt also so when actually when we do street photography um for myself i always look for a special or a good background okay and okay. of course we look for likes okay and stay there to wait uh maybe some someone pass by or some interesting uh, thing will happen so just uh take the photo okay this is some some uh, uh some tips that i uh, i will do like when we do uh street photography okay so, so how long do you usually wait for for them when you take all these photos like actually uh, like like actually like this photo uh, uh, in doing street photography or uh, what I can say doing uh, documentary photography, the 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 ability to anticipate what is going to happen is I think is very important for the for a photographer. You see, yeah. so uh, yeah. when we see a, a good background or a good location, the environment, those sort of thing, and we see around there, maybe th there will be a someone who will pass by. Uh, within minutes or what you well, I don't actually encourage you to just stay there to wait something happen for hours right? it's not it's not practical so I saw yeah. just yeah. Sleep, we are in travel but maybe some some uh, people they are traveling with their families or friends you know the family or, or their friends might not be a photographer they will wait for you right just so you don't wait yeah. there for yeah. an hour something like that yeah so, so just stay there and work, uh, uh, wait and anticipate uh, that there might be someone uh, passing by because this uh little boy he's playing around there so and he, he will walk by okay he'll come and then i just wait at the corner there and he walk by I just get the shot right and then uh we look for uh good lightings good subjects okay so uh this tailor he's working in his shop okay lighting is uh very soft of course uh, a little bit low light okay but um of course when you holding a fuji film camera on your head in your hand okay so low light condition is no no problem actually for okay um yeah. at least uh i um we look, look for lights okay because photography of course we look for lights again okay? no matter low lights okay soft light okay harsh light this on the street okay this is actually the main purpose i travel to uh, uh egypt okay to okay. shoot the uh, uh bread okay uh, because egyptian they had bread uh every day so this uh, uh the main uh objective i travel i want to shoot this story actually all right so we said this uh, um when we shooting on the street okay walk around you you will discover okay something interesting something 
which is very uh, meaningful to take photograph. Okay, so do more uh, uh, ex as an explorer. You know, when you go inside some small alley to to find something interesting to shoot. This I, I found it. Okay, when we, when we are I, I'm shooting the uh, 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 factory that uh, baking bread. Okay, so just a few doors away inside a small valley. Uh, I found this. Uh, they are buying the uh, uh, little string there with a lot of colors. Okay, because it's really low light inside there. Okay, so I, I when I looked at this thing, I like it. So I stay there for a few hours to take some photograph. Okay, this is how actually. Yes. In, uh, in, uh, 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 there is a lot of a lot to do with uh, uh, observing and uh, maybe also also exploring a bit, a bit yeah. to 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 look at look at things and find out things about what to shoot probably mm -hmm. we have, sometimes when we travel we do not have an idea of what we might want to shoot but we just mm -hmm. go to the, and just see what we can see and uh, maybe create some images from there lah. right yeah yeah most of the time yes uh, because we, we we it's not like uh uh let's say uh the first project that i did i know uh, I go to Phnom Penh, I want to go to the railway track side, alongside those things to shoot the people down there. I already know what I can see, yeah. you know? And, but of course, when we, we reach there, we explore for interesting subjects or happening kind of thing to, to shoot. But of course, when we travel, we don't know. We right. don't know what we can uh, uh, get. Uh, unless you travel with some photography trip that uh, uh, they call it a stage, those subject for you those kind of things you know you, you, you will get those kind of picture back right oh, oh, no, no, no. Uh -huh. just right when they stage everything for you mm -hmm. yeah but mm -hmm. uh I, I guess like what you mentioned if if we are on a project we probably know what we want to capture mm -hmm. but traveling which i'm sure a lot of the viewers viewers here travel a lot as well and mm -hmm. sometimes maybe really got no idea what to do but really as an observer what we can see whether is it the lighting or whether is it the composition or different kind of uh, composition that we can you know create images that be more interesting mm -hmm. so actually um, for myself uh throughout the years of to the of learning of photography i when we reach a location something like this to take photograph sometimes we don't actually uh, uh um really look for special angle, you know? Because yeah. uh, for me, if I it's for me, the, uh, the story or the emotion or the, the moment that you capture in the uh, uh, the picture is really important. Rather yeah. than you look for some special angle, uh, 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 climb into something or get some frame of the frame, those kind of things to try to create some wow factor but eventually, you don't get the uh, the, the, the good story yeah. behind the the, 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 the photos. Uh -huh. uh, I guess you're right. So science is about the story. Science we might mm -hmm. not get a wow photo, but it's not mm -hmm. the story behind it that makes it special. Yeah. So so this is another uh, uh, series of photo I took uh, last year in okay. uh, in China. This is a tea house uh, series. Okay. Um, most of the people, uh, of, of course, photographers from uh, Malaysia, when they travel uh, to shoot tea house in China, they will go to Chengdu, okay? The yeah. uh, very yeah. famous Guan Yin Ge. But yeah. uh, uh, I, I, I shot the Guan Yin Ge before, so uh, uh, two years ago when I traveled in China, in uh, Inner Mongolia, I actually share my pictures with a uh, photography lecturer. Uh, he's a photography lecturer in Guangzhou. So when you look at my picture, you say you should go and explore more uh, uh, tea culture of China. So he recommend me to this location near Nanjing. So I do travel there, I go there, okay, and uh, take some photograph, okay, understand the uh, uh, history and the culture behind this place. It's, a, it's actually not a particular tea house, it's a tea house street, a lot of tea house there, okay? so. Even people sitting out there on the street, okay, to enjoy tea, okay, to uh, uh, talk to their friends, something like that. So, so this is the whole thing, uh, something that you can see. Um, I guess it's uh, different compared to the one in Chengdu, right? But the one in Chengdu, mm -hmm. it's like a lot of people been there, done that. Mm -hmm. 
mm. it's a bit different like the, how the people respond to photographers but over here mm. probably the people respond to photographers a bit differently yeah uh it depends on uh where you actually uh go to right uh yeah. in uh taking photograph especially street sometimes you be strangers okay and sometimes okay let's say we we travel to those uh, uh tea house um it's considered street photography also but those uh, uh people down there they are used to photographers okay yeah, so yeah. <laughs> it's not it's not, uh, nothing uh, uh shy or whatever uh, but of course as a photographer uh, to respect uh uh the uh yeah. the, the person that we want to take photography when we're holding the camera walk around we look at those people and of course the most important thing will always be the smiling face ha, 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 uncle you good ha, ha. and then just take the photograph this it's how we yeah. do it. Very good. One of the guys just asked a question. Do uh -huh. you ask for permission when you shoot the people? Uh, it depends. Okay, so um, let's say the tea house, you don't need because they use the program. They don't those those guys can carry camera coming in. Of course, they are going to take pictures. Of all, yeah. I mean in uh, Chengdu, Guanyin, there are a few old men. They don't like people to take their photograph. So actually, yeah. when you walk near them with a camera on, in your hand, there will you, know, you, you, you sometimes we need to learn to see uh, others' face expression yeah. also. When they don't show you friendly uh, expressions, so of course, don't take their pictures. Okay. Yeah. So for my style, I don't ask. Okay, even show, uh, in the street on the street, I don't ask because I like to take uh, the photograph of their lifestyle in the most natural way so if yeah. i say ah, uncle ah, let's say a chakwe tiao uncle i want yeah. to take his photograph of chakwe tiao i say uncle ah, can i take your photograph and uncle say oh you want to take my photograph of chakwe tiao ah, he, the, the, the guy start to act, act, act ah, right, right. Tiao start flying i don't want those things okay so it's uh, nothing wrong to ask and for me uh, let's say uh take a picture of a stranger you feel don't you don't don't feel happy right you show me a a, a angry face or whatever I'll, I'll, I'll just smile at him if he's still not happy okay i'll go uh, in front of him and show him the picture. this is the picture i took this now okay so if you don't uh, uh feel comfortable i did it i'm sorry just go away i right? guess uh, for, for us for travel photographers for street photographers mm -hmm. what's very important is uh, to me like, i always feel that mm -hmm. to respect the people i i don't ask so i usually don't ask I will just mm. show this, but mm. I will not try to, although I don't ask, but I will not make myself such a nuisance to them. La. Like maybe they are doing yeah. something. I try yeah. not to stop them. So not to disturb them and yeah. then uh, respect people. Of course, when, yeah. when we take taking photograph, one or two shot, and uh, eventually the, uh, the, the, let's say yeah. that's, that's okay, we, we, we are sitting, look, look at you. So yeah, just yeah. put down the camera. Just don't just ah, keep on clicking. Put down right. the camera. Give him a smile. If the response is not good, just say sorry. Thank you. Go. Yeah. If still get mad with you, of course you can uh, always delete the photo or whatever. Yeah. I All guess right? the problem with a lot of people is a lot of times when I bring my students overseas to shoot. Oops, sorry. When I bring my mm -hmm. students to shoot, uh, mm -hmm. a lot of people this problem when they shoot, right? Let's say. Mm -hmm. uh, shooting this person in front of me i keep on mm. shooting and they fail to re realize that science people mm. are not happy and yeah. and you make people feel very uncomfortable so i guess what's very important like uh -huh. the view there, like when you shoot try to maintain a smile also and sometimes even yeah. they, they they don't feel very happy or don't feel very comfortable but but when mm. you smile at them, right mm. they, they just close one eye they are not really too bothered by it yeah, yeah but, but for me the most i think the most important thing of talking about uh, uh respect uh, yeah, yeah. others okay so when we take a photograph of a stranger okay on, on the street okay so uh we need to keep a, a, a distance between ourselves and and, and and the guy okay uh that's why i like to use a 23 mm or 35 okay just keep a good distance between us and not because of we want to have a very 
a, a powerful picture and go nearer it. Although Robert Kappa said, if your picture is not good enough, you are close enough. The, but the, the close is not, it's not a physical distance of close. It's yep. Yep. close, right? So you don't put the camera until like that. Wow, loud. So people right. feel offended, right? So uh, we, we, uh, we, we don't do that. Uh -huh. Correct. So I think it's very important to, to have respect la, for people when we take photos. Uh, yes, yes. When you mentioned your, your lens just now, I just have a question over here. Okay, for all the viewers out there, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask us any questions regarding uh -huh. street photography and things like that. So keep the question coming in. We'll try our best to answer you guys. So uh, one of the questions they ask is, uh, uh, what's your favorite lens for street photography? So I guess Thomas has already mentioned it. Your favorite is uh, 23 or so, right? Uh, 23, 23, 23 and the 35. I like it right. very much. Uh -huh. It for depends. Myself, uh, okay. uh, yeah. How about you, William? <laughs> you, you share some... Uh, uh -huh. For myself, I like I like the twenty three mm also. In fact, uh -huh. uh, I use twenty three mm a lot for my street photography. Uh -huh. In fact, a lot of people ask like you know if I can have only one lens with me while I travel, which lens will I bring? Uh, it's always the twenty three mm. Sixty five. Sixty five. Sixty five. The best is eighteen fifty five. Yeah, so unless unless I, I go to Africa and things like that, I need long lens. But otherwise, if I go to a city and things like that, uh, the 23 mm lens is always uh, one of my favorite lens or so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, the another question that they might mm -hmm. have, one of the viewers have is, do you wait for the right moment? Um, I for, for me, it depends also. Like, when I see good light, sometimes I might wait a while. Uh, mm -hmm whether there's any interesting subjects but usually i like to move around like if okay. i go where i'm in uh in say where i'm in morocco i walk around the streets uh mm -hmm. a lot to see things to shoot and mm -hmm. uh sometimes i might wait a bit but not waiting forever like you mentioned just now but mm -hmm. uh what's the longest you have waited for the right moment actually uh yeah. close to 40 minutes I think 40, 45, something like that. Uh -huh. okay. In front of a, a, a good background, a wall, something like that. Okay. I just need one one person. Walk person. Through. Yeah. Uh, one. Yeah. Uh, always there are a few. Uh, sometimes one, one person walk by, but bicycle, motorcycle, kachau, kachau, and all those kind of things will, will happen. Okay? Yeah. So I don't get what I want. Okay. So I just wait if I have the time. Okay. I don't have the time. Never mind. Okay, at least yeah. I get something. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, it's not perfectly what I want. Uh, I just just get. Uh, I spend more time to explore more. Maybe there are still something more interesting is coming on. I don't know. Right. Agree. Agree. Definitely. Mm -hmm. so, but right now, uh, uh, okay. For Singapore now, we are under uh uh, uh so called lockdown. Uh, we are we are encouraged yeah. to go out. So of course, a lot of us have not been going out to shoot for Malaysia. Yeah. What's the condition over there? I mean, are you guys? Uh, we have been locked uh, locked down for more than fifty days. Okay, okay. Uh, but, uh, so, but since uh, last few days, I mean, this week is uh, uh, we is uh, partially uh, lifted, and uh, some uh, business uh, activities is allowed okay. to to uh, uh, reopen their shops or whatever. But of course, it's stated down there: no photography activities. Okay. Oh, they, they that, is it? Yes, 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 yes. Okay, you can't go to the park. Okay, you can't go jogging at the park. Those kind of things. Okay, keep social uh, social distance. And even even so, uh, they call it a special class or whatever. Uh, can't more than how many people? Those are, there's still some rules. So, okay. um, I have not been uh, shooting out there for uh, more than fifty over days. Uh. I shoot at home. I shoot at home. Okay. Yes, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, since this kind of lockdown, okay, uh, we forced to cook for ourselves. Okay, <laughs> for the past forty nine years, I never know uh, uh, know how to cook, but now I I learn I know how to cook a bit. So <laughs> it's a very uh, uh, good memory. So every single meal I cook, so I take photograph. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah, interesting, interesting. Yeah, I guess I guess now a lot of us uh, try our best to cure our. Yeah. Each at home, la, take some photos at yeah. home and, uh, because cannot yeah. go out. 
Uh-huh. Yeah. So, but, uh, yeah. So, uh, why don't you show us some of your trailer sure. street photograph? Okay. Sure. So, uh, I think uh, most of the uh, uh, viewers here they like to uh, view some of your pictures also. Just share with us, uh, okay. of course, a little bit tips uh, and advice from you uh, when we travel. So, what should we do? Okay, do we, uh, how, what should we be prepared to uh, do street photography uh, um, other than uh, uh, carry, uh, of course, uh, what is in your camera bag? <laughs> oh, oh, good question. Okay, I guess, I guess um, when I do street photography, okay, oh. if you, this trip is mainly doing a lot of street, I try to travel light. Uh, maybe mm-hmm. just like, and just one camera in my, in my hand. Um, mm-hmm. So what I usually do is I just bring a camera like that with a 23mm. Uh, but of course, mm. what, here, what I have here is the ST4 for those of you. Oh, yeah. But <laughs> yeah. So so uh, usually this is just the camera, one camera I use for street photography and one sling mm. bag in case I need to change lens. Like mm-hmm. So from so that conspicuous to people, I would you know try to be as invisible as I can. So um, I look out for light and shadows and things like that also, framing and stuff. So mm-hmm. maybe I can show like, you know, just a few pictures to share some ideas. Um, mm-hmm. Let's see. Mm-hmm. Ah, I'm having the X-Pro3 since you're showing the X-T4. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the, my setup at home, okay, the X-Pro3. And the 62.4 macro, well, I should put my okay. okay. So then it becomes a photographer at home. <laughs> so so how do you how do you find the uh, SD SD X Pro 3? Oh, this is a very good I, 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 I haven't used the X Pro 3 yet. I was using the SD4 and you know things like that, but I never test out the X Pro 3 yet. What are your thoughts uh, about it? Uh, it's a it's a very good camera, eh, huh? I guess uh this is a range finder style, okay? So when you shoot, okay, those uh, when old time or old school time, let's say when you use range finder, what another eye, you can see what's happening, what's coming to your frame, those kind of things. But uh, of course, for uh, a modern photographer, they don't do that anymore, I think, okay? Uh-huh. So uh, I don't do that also, but uh, uh-huh. since the X-Pro3, okay? Uh, before I got my hand on the X-Pro3, I, 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 I watch a lot of uh, video about X, X Pro 3 and, uh, and it, uh, they bring back the truly photography kind of thing, right? So I try to see oh, what's so interesting about it. The first thing, no screen now. Okay. <laughs> yeah, really this, right. No screen now. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, we concentrate, we focus ourselves to see okay, what's happening and uh, what to shoot. Okay. So when you see that, uh, eventually I, I try to open up my. Uh, left eye. Yeah, correct. See more. Okay. Maybe when I, when I try to click something on the street, okay, ah, a, a, a cat is going to come in. Okay. Uh, so I just wait for a little while. The cat come into my frame. Okay, just click. Okay. This this camera is good. Especially I love this camera because of the uh the new film simulation, the okay. classic negative. Okay. okay. Uh before I get my hand on this export tree. All my uh, pictures submitted to Fuji Films uh-huh. are all black and white images. So uh-huh. Fuji Film Malaysia marketing staff or even the process <laughs> guy or is black and white guy. Okay? Uh-huh. <laughs> no color. But since uh-huh. the, the first thing I, I get the export tree, uh, I I I read about the export tree about, about the uh, uh, classic uh, negative film simulation. Once uh-huh. once I get it, I try to be some. So eventually, yeah. it came out a series of photo with the uh, classic negative film simulation. Is S O O C uh, just, just now the uh, P How Street those photograph is in classic negative. Okay, okay? Yeah. and I don't do any uh, 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 post processing to those images because um, when I get back from China uh, immediately after three days, we need to do a, a export three. Uh, launching events. Okay? okay, so I need to okay. rush out those pictures to, to the event. So, okay, sweet out our camera. Very good, very nice. You should try. <laughs> right. uh, once once this whole thing is over, I will borrow from uh, Fuji Film Singapore the S Pro Three and try it out. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay, maybe just uh, I just show some some pictures, some of my mm -hmm. ideas that I talked about Swift and all. So, so for me, like I mentioned, uh, same as you also, um, there's no such thing as what is how we define street photography, but basically mm -hmm. whatever, whatever I see, you know, is uh, photos that I like to capture. So mm -hmm. uh, this is one of the pictures that I have. Uh, this was taken in uh, Morocco. No. Oh, nice in uh, street photography, I like to create some tension in the pictures. Mm -hmm. So uh, the lighting is good, you know, Morocco is also Africa. Uh, there's very good lights and things like that. I like it when the shadow, you know, somebody was just, this old lady was walking away from me. And mm. um, suddenly there's another guy coming in into the shadow. So I like it mm. a lot. Because, uh, to me, you know, it, it makes a viewer want to look at the image more. You know, what's happening? This guy in the shadow following the lady and yeah. uh, what's happening. So mm. in photography, I like to... To make people with, uh, curious, I okay, to look yeah, into correct, more into the picture. Mm -hmm. Correct, correct. So this is what I like to do. And of course, I like uh, to look at lights and things like that. So uh, this was the church. So this was in Budapest. So oh. uh, lights, uh, you know, leading lights and things like that. I like the two, the, the couple by the side. Uh, mm. I like coming in, just showing their profile and things like that, which I really love a lot. So mm -hmm. always. I always, for me, I always look out for lights and, and things like that also, uh, light and shadow. Uh, contrary to what people thought, they thought that, you know, this guy was posing for me. No, this was at the bar of the change in uh, one of the town in Sri Lanka. So light was very cool. I saw this uh, older man, you know, standing in the light with a bit of, uh, standing in the shadow with a bit of light on his eyes. So I like that, that partial look very, you know, very mysterious lah. So street photography, I like to create all this mystery also in the photos. And, you know, a bit of him in the light, a bit of the bus at the back. So it looks very interesting to me. So this is mm -hmm. uh, what I always try to look out for. Mm -hmm. So sure this was taken in Morocco. So, so again, uh, light and shadow, you know, to, to create a tension between two individuals. Lah. One mm -hmm. on the bottom right corner and one on the left. Uh, you know, they are far apart. Between them, there's this light or shadow between them. So to me, mm -hmm. I like to create this kind of um, tension in the picture to make it more, mm -hmm. make a little bit more interesting. So mm -hmm. this is another picture um, that that I like. Uh, eh? Hold on, uh, I, mm -hmm. Okay, I share two more pictures. Yeah. Okay, so this is another picture that I like uh, about creating stories uh, of each individual in the single frame. So, mm -hmm. uh, uh, this is like, hold on, uh. oops, very sorry, I need to close this, okay. Sorry guys, just uh, I need to open up my screen again. Yeah. Okay. So what I have here is um, another two pictures that I liked. So uh, this is also taken in Sri Lanka. Uh, mm -hmm. um, the same bus interchange as well. So I like it. I like it because uh, you know, it shows each individual doing their own thing and the light is beautiful as well. And this lady on the left hand side come into the light very nicely and behind her is the shadow and the other two gentlemen by the side in the light. So it shows like, you know, it's like two, two images in a single frame that makes it look interesting. I always look out for all these uh, images when mm -hmm. I do photography. Mm -hmm. Another one that I liked uh, is this one as well. This was uh, taken in Sri Lanka So Yeah, correct. Mm -hmm. So. This is what, what uh, uh, Thomas mentioned also, like what people mm -hmm. ask also, waiting for that moment. So mm -hmm. like, yeah, you know, I was just walking around, I saw pictures that I shoot. But this one, because I saw the lights very nice, I saw these two boys, you know, running quite actively. So I anticipated for them mm -hmm. to get the light and um, mm -hmm. I pre-focused and for them to come in and I shot them, you know, right in the light when they are you know, moving. So I like mm. things like that. So to answer some of the viewers' question is about mm. you know, how how I like 
uh, how we might you know wait for certain movements. Uh, these are times where I wait for certain movements. Uh. So uh, Thomas, there's another question that just came in. Okay. Yeah. They were asking, would you prefer S hundred V instead of a uh, ST four or ST three plus a twenty three and M to be less conspicuous? Um, uh, okay, for me, okay. Although I love the S hundred series, but mm -hmm. again, for for us, you know, I I have a GFS, I have ST three, ST two, and all these cameras, so mm -hmm. I don't buy too many cameras. So yes. Mm -hmm. To a certain extent, uh, S hundred V with a uh, S hundred V might be better for street photography, but mm -hmm. I'm not a hundred percent street photographer. I'm a travel mm -hmm. photographer, a wedding photographer. So to buy one more camera, uh, uh, I'm not in favor of it. Like, I don't spend too much money to buy another camera. So, mm -hmm. so I just stick with my SD three, uh, and now SD four with a twenty three mm, which I feel is as good. Uh yeah, so for me the reason of not using S hundred series is more of you know not spending money to buy another camera. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what about you, Thomas? What do you think? Uh for me, my first Fujifilm camera is actually uh the X one hundred. Okay, the X one hundred, the first generation. Um okay. I, I when I got the first um X one hundred about I think about nine years ago, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. nine years ago, I tried to play around with this camera because I like the design of the camera. Okay, so okay. Uh, I actually booked it. Okay, um, when I got it, I tried to play with it. Okay, uh, but at that time, sorry to say that the X100 is very, 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 very slow. <laughs> so uh, after I, I play around with it, I try uh, uh, for uh, one week or something like that, one week, uh, I decided to sell the camera and make some profit out of it because people are, are trying to grab that camera. So just so it. So after that, uh, about another three to four years, uh, I get my first X Pro one. Uh, it's hard, like, so from that time, I never uh, put my hand on the X100 series uh, until, until um uh, beginning of this year maybe we have uh, uh we plan actually we plan to do a xt4 uh street photography event after the xt4 launch right so uh, uh when we go around to do recce for location i actually uh, uh, uh play around with the x100v uh what i can tell you is after this lockdown the first thing i'm going to do is go to fujifilm uh, Malaysia to grab uh, one one hundred V, okay, uh, and sample the uh, white converter and the tele converter, okay, okay, uh, the, the two converter lens and put in my race bag and uh -huh. just go to do photography. Uh, one right. thing I I love, uh, I mean I can uh, think think of this because it's something different to uh the the, the xt series of or, or the x4 series that uh, uh we, we are used to it because this uh um, x100v or the work x100 series is a fixed lens thing okay yeah. Yeah. so let's say you go up with just one lens okay which is the uh 23 f2 yep. so yeah. what kind of photos you can shoot or or, or you, it might give you uh, I mean, so called force you to think more, okay, to move more yeah. to get whatever picture you want. Okay, this is the first thing I'm going to do after the lockdown. Uh, go to <laughs> Malaysia, it's quite near to my house. So okay. just grab the camera, right? Yeah, I, I guess you're right because, um, hmm. uh, that's why I like to use fixed lenses also for my cameras hmm. because somehow hmm. it forces you to, to hmm. think. Like you know, mm -hmm. thirty five mm or twenty three mm, it forced mm -hmm. me to think like at this distance, um, mm -hmm. what's the framing will be like? So yeah, because yeah. a long time you when you use a certain fixed lens, right? You uh -huh. know that that distance, right? Okay, it's a twenty three mm. It's going to look like yeah. yeah I walk in, mm -hmm. I just, uh, yeah. like some of the old timers, you know, the old photographers, they always used to tell me or so. They say um, uh, practice with a fixed lens, then uh, mm -hmm. you know. You, you can get your framing, your composition better and things like that. So I guess mm. uh, uh, 
uh, maybe years ago when I first started photography, I did not understand what it meant. But now, mm-hmm. after all, all these years, right, as a photographer, mm-hmm. where I use fixed lenses, then I also understand, like when I teach my students also, um, when, when I use fixed lenses, it forces you to think a bit more. Yeah, mm-hmm. so I guess the S100V will have that advantage in that sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, uh, of course, it's it's a uh, uh, I mean in the uh, uh, shutter design also is a different thing. It's the uh, X hundred uh, series is the least shutter uh, compared to what we we have is is different thing. Okay. Yeah. 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 So yeah. So so uh, I would say maybe if uh, someone is a hundred percent street photographer, uh, mm-hmm. uh, maybe X hundred be really be be good for them la. Yeah, but yeah. like. People like me because I shoot different genre of photography. I shoot wildlife, mm. I shoot things, I shoot travel. Mm. I definitely like SD, SD4 now or GFS because I can change my lenses, I can have more variety mm. of things. So mm. yeah, definitely um, there will be differences in that sense. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Because so, uh, for my, my myself, uh, sometimes I do, uh, uh, most of the time, I actually are talking about photography. I do a lot of workshops. Okay, yeah. so uh, I I do have a, a street photography workshop. Okay, yeah. so yeah. why I plan to get the hundred V is because sometimes when I mean when Chinese said uh, when you want to do something, okay, you need to look like something right so sort of thing okay uh if you want to be a monk you need to dress like a monk okay you don't dress like a, a, a lawyer when you, you are a monk so so, so, like that. so for this uh, uh, so for this uh, uh street photography workshop i tend to uh, uh, uh use the uh, x100v here okay, to uh, try to uh, share with my uh, friends that how they join my workshop okay so uh, with a fixed lens okay if i want to change a lot i'm not able to okay so what, what should we do uh, what kind of thinking uh, those are things it's, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's quite a good, good camera okay yeah. Yeah. because it, they change this new lens uh, quite a good camera mm-hmm. yeah definitely yeah. interesting so i guess after after all this uh social distancing is being lifted right everybody will rush mm-hmm. down to look at different cameras to see what suits them most yeah mm, yeah yeah okay Maybe I can share uh, one or two more pictures about okay how I look at lighting and and, and things like that. So sometimes uh, when I see certain lighting, again, um, like we always talk about anticipation and things like that. So uh, uh, this was taken in Philippines. I I was um, I was basically. Uh, uh, I, I saw the lights, I saw the colors, I thought it was fantastic. So I did not have to wait too long. I probably wait for less than 15 minutes. Then I saw a boy run past. So I shot this picture. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I shot I I I I shot this picture. So, mm-hmm. so I, I loved how the light comes come into the boy's uh, uh, uh face mm-hmm. and uh, uh, how the lighting is like, you know, diagonal shadow from bottom right corner all the way yeah. up. So it yeah. just these uh, things I really like. And of mm. course, I, besides, you know, lighting and things like that, sometimes I like to play with um, uh, colors. Like, I always feel that when we compose certain pictures, we can always use colors to compose pictures or so. I guess, a lot of times when people look for composition and mm-hmm. uh, uh, look at how they compose a certain picture and things like that, mm-hmm. they are looking at um, framing and mm-hmm. look at um, uh, how they should lines or, or perspective like, or whatever. Uh-huh. I like to look at colors also. So these uh-huh. images just to share. Um, Okay, hold on. Mm. So actually, there's another. I saw another questions uh, coming in. So, okay. prefer primes over zoom lens for sleep. Mm-hmm. I think there's one question, right? Uh, why do we prefer prime lens over zoom lens for sleep? <laughs> okay, but I think uh, for last few minutes conversation that uh. 
we answer that okay because prime lenses is good <laughs> yeah i guess yeah. it trains us to train us to be a bit more uh aware of our composition and things like that yeah so prime lens it forces us to think more i guess mm -hmm. yeah. yeah so uh okay just to share with you about uh mm -hmm. composition with colors so i like oh. to play with colors also mm -hmm. so like for example, this image, um, we can see that if the colors are in tune with each other. The, the blue on the boy's shirt, the blue on the wall, and the blue on the sky. You know, it's mm -hmm. how I like to play with colors to make it complement each other. Mm -hmm. I, I used to do a lot of black and white. I still do a lot of black and white also, but I've grown mm -hmm. to um, like colors also and how to use colors to our advantage. So like this one was taken in Tibet. So that was taken in Tibet. Uh, no, not Tibet. Bhutan, sorry. So okay. I, the red. You see, the red, uh, the three reds actually form a triangle. And how I use the red to you know, complement each other, the colors make it more interesting. And the person looking mm -hmm. at it here uh, as a street photo, to me, somehow mm -hmm. it looks a bit more interesting rather than just, uh, 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 just one person or whatever, but just look at the colors, how to complement each other. Like even mm -hmm. for this one, so this was taken in uh, uh, Sri Lanka as well. Um, I learned how, how the colors complement each other, the red on the train and the mm -hmm. red on the man's shirt. Um, it all comes together very nicely. And the nice mm -hmm. last one as well was in Sri Lanka. You know, mm -hmm. I, that was fantastic. Wow. And I saw the blue motorbike. And I saw the man walking away. He was wearing a blue uh, sarong as well. You know how mm. basically everything comes together in terms of colors. So I like mm. to play with colors and show how they actually complement each other in the picture. Mm. So uh, that's how I I I I like to you know uh, uh, play with colors and things like that. Also, I'm not yeah. sensitive with colors. <laughs> that's why my all my pictures, all my images are in black and white. <laughs> I, I, I like a lot of black and white also. In fact, I, I, I do a lot of black and white photos, but just somehow in the recent years, I try to do a bit of color as well because um, black and white, after a while, I guess um, a lot of people would be shooting black and white also. So I want to uh, try to break out of it lah, to, mm -hmm. to make something more interesting. Mm -hmm. So of course, uh, just how somebody mentioned in the question also about um, uh, waiting for that moment. So yes, sometimes I wait for that moment, but sometimes the moment just happen. So mm -hmm. uh, I'm just sharing some photos over here as well. Yeah. yeah so um, this was taken in Paris. Uh, I was actually in the car. So whenever I'm in the car, or even last time when I'm always shooting my couples overseas, my eyes are always everywhere. I don't just look at one particular subject or whatever. So I, I was in the car, I was looking out, I saw a couple of kids, and it was just for that one, two seconds. I just shoot. And mm -hmm. I love the light. You know, it's not just that moment, but it's how the light falls on the faces very nicely. Mm -hmm. And uh, everything else will play again. So mm -hmm. another shot, moment shot again, this was in India. Um, again, walking in the streets, everything mm -hmm. just to play nicely all the subjects are separated very nicely and uh, all of them are doing their own things so i grabbed this shot and it was just that moment the next second the whole scene will have changed so this is why, what i always try to look at like that mm -hmm. moment shot uh where we cannot replicate that scene anymore and it's just over and it's over mm -hmm. yeah so another shot in india um where you know the people are working and things like that i love the color so uh, different composition comes into mind as well. Looking at the colors, but looking mm -hmm. at the hand, the green on the hand, the colors, the movement, everything comes to play in this shot as a as a street photo to to show. You know, I don't have to show the faces. I show mm -hmm. the I show the the hand uh, to show the tension again and how mm -hmm. how interesting it can be mm -hmm. And uh, another shot. This was in Morocco as well. Um, oh. uh, I love the. I just love the then again sometimes luck plays a part. Mm -hmm. Cyclist was going past and another cyclist was in the arch coming in. So again, you know, got two subjects in the same frame, but uh, mm -hmm. 
opposite going opposite direction it, mm-hmm. it creates attention to make it a bit more interesting yeah, then, yeah. Uh, uh this was in uh uh croatia uh no slovenia yeah so um i saw you know typical movement shot like i saw you no know, kids playing so i'll capture that movement and uh mm-hmm. you know, of the elder sister giving a kiss to the little sister and mm-hmm. another shot the next picture uh this was just nice um uh somehow the lady was looking at me uh, i saw the picture mm-hmm. as i grabbed a shot you know mm-hmm. it was not just a shot of her looking at me but a, you know, a shot of a of a of a subject flying past a pigeon flying past in front of her to frame her very nicely mm-hmm. so uh, to answer that question about movement shot these are the movements that i try to look out for and uh, uh, try to be a bit you no know, different in some of the street photos, mm-hmm. yeah. So mm-hmm. things like that, mm-hmm. yeah. Maybe maybe Thomas, you can share with us uh, a yeah. few more of the photos to show us uh, maybe some of the ideas uh, that you might have behind some of the images. Um. Okay. Uh. So since uh, William, yeah, yeah, I understand that you just got your new XT four. Right? Oh yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. So, uh, uh, okay. Maybe I just show you guys for uh-huh. for you know because Singapore now we are under lockdown, so so some of the guys mm-hmm. cannot go out. In fact, everybody cannot go out to take a look at the camera. So just mm-hmm. to show people the size between the SD four and the SD three. Mm-hmm. So um, okay, just a quick look. So actually, there's not much size difference. The one without mm-hmm. the ST4, the other one is the ST3. Mm-hmm. So um, in terms of size, there's not much difference. Uh, this one does not come with the grip. So the grip is definitely bigger, but the camera size is actually not that much of a difference. I would say it's mm-hmm. much bigger in size. Yeah. So um uh well, I guess a lot of the viewers might have seen me talking about ST4 in the previous uh, uh broadcasts. So mm-hmm. I probably not going to say too much about camera except except that of course you know you can do all your uh flip screen and things like that so mm-hmm. uh, which a lot of people would have known already so um yeah the 180 360 flip screen so mm-hmm. people enjoy it of course the evs as well but mm-hmm. uh uh i was using it a lot uh, when I did the ST4 project in Japan, but the one was on wildlife. So maybe Thomas, I uh, understand you also did some street photos with the ST4. Maybe you can uh-huh. show us some of the pictures you shot with the ST4 and how do you feel is the difference between the other cameras and ST4 when you're doing street photography? Mm-hmm. Okay, right. uh, I did prepare some uh, pictures with uh, uh, that I shot with the ST4. Um, yep. Because some of the uh, uh, my friend again, they are they are using XP three of course, and yep. uh, they asked me well, why what is why I need to upgrade to uh, XT four. Um, I said if you if you are using an XT three, uh, you, you you don't need a, 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 a image stabilizer. Okay, you all, 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 by all means you can stay with your XT three. But of course. Okay. If you are something uh, you try to you like to uh, uh, shoot street photography documentary something like what I am doing, uh, especially I, I, I love to shoot in low lights. Okay, so this XT4 actually helps a lot, and especially when we shoot. Okay, there's one question over there. I think I can uh, we can still answer that question. Do you post or stage your photos? Okay, those uh, post or stage. 99.9% no for me okay so uh this xt4 of uh, the uh the 360 uh, flip screen that uh just uh, william just shown us is actually a very good tool eh? because when uh i go and take photograph especially i i i like to shoot a, a particular person or subject or whatever sometimes you just can't have enough space or the angle you can't actually reach you need to put your camera somewhere else then you need the flip screen and to uh, to look at the screen to do your compositions also i think this uh, xt4 is uh, uh flip screen really helps and then when we hold the camera away from our body something like this okay holding the camera away or something like this is not in a uh, hold like this it tends to have camera shape and especially in low light condition so this xt4 uh this uh so-called the uh 
image stabilizer, the screen is really good. Uh, it's a really good tools. Like I can say, uh, of course, some of my friends they will talk about the 15 frame per second, those kind of things. Uh, if you're not a uh, if you're a sport photographer or something something like a wildlife photographer like you, uh, Williams, you need the 15 frame per second, right? So because you need to capture the the movement, yeah. those kind of things. Okay, yeah. but for myself, uh, uh, most of the time I don't, don't use bird shot, bird shot, shot or something like that. I don't, I don't need the so-called 15 frame per second, those kind of things. But uh, one more thing is very important: the new battery of the XT4. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I managed to get seven hundred plus shots from one battery. Okay. Oh, okay. So it's, nice. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah, yeah, seven hundred plus shot with one battery. So let's uh, share with you guys some of okay. the pictures that I took with the XT4. Yeah, that's very good because um, uh, when I was shooting in Japan for wildlife, right? Mm. I so. Mm -hmm. okay, so I cannot have a clear reflective of like you know one battery can can shoot how many shots, but you mentioned it very nicely. You know seven hundred, mm -hmm. seven hundred. Yeah, that's because, good. Uh, while I'm uh, shooting the um, the video, I mean the uh, promotion video of XT4 for Fujifilm Malaysia. Okay, but yep. at that time I only have one battery. I only one battery. Okay. Uh, I don't have spare battery. Okay, so uh, I know. That uh, when I run out of battery uh, somewhere in the evening, <clears throat> I know I already have uh, seven hundred overshots in there. So it's seven hundred overshots. Okay. Yeah. So this is one of the uh, photo I took with the XT4. The uh, first round I go to uh, try out the camera. This I shot in uh, Sungai Lembing, Kuantan. Uh, and okay. old okay. uncle he's uh, he's doing uh, 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 repairing those watches. Uh, uh, this uncle is very good. Okay. And okay. Uh, okay. so this is one of the picture, and okay. the other one, coming up. Okay, same thing, same anchor. Okay, um, this is the uh, the color, the film, uh, the film simulation. I love the classic negative. Okay, okay. classic negative with, with the uh, uh, this shot. Okay, so uh, I like to share with you. Uh, series of photographs that mm. I took in a place called Sungai Lima. Okay, okay. it's just nearby uh, a very famous small island Pulau Ketam, where it's in uh, Klang Slang. Oh. This okay. place uh, produces the uh, uh, largest supply of dry stream in Malaysia. Okay, okay. so when I have this XT4 and I need to do a, a promotion video for Fujifilm Malaysia, I decided to bring the XT4 to this place Okay. to uh, document the story of dry stream okay, okay. so let's uh, share with you guys the uh, slideshow of this uh, sure. pictures okay. uh, shot with the xt4 in black and white okay, okay. And, uh, which lens were you using uh for this i'm using the uh 1655 okay okay, okay. Uh, because it's uh, uh the time is is for the video uh for promotional video purposes i need to use the 1655 and some one or two pictures i shot with the 5140 okay, okay. so yeah. let's go come okay <laughs> mm -hmm. low light condition really low light Okay, we are looking at the photos. Uh, uh, you put black and white out from camera, or should you, or, or do you shoot in color and process it in black and white? Okay. Uh, most of the time, uh, I don't take most of the time when I take photograph. I don't actually convert my camera picture profile or the film formulation into black and white. I don't. So I want to look into my viewfinder. I like to look at the real world. Because back and white is something out of the real world. It's something different kind of thing. So I don't actually uh, convert my uh, film simulation in the camera. It's in color. I should go. Black and white, you protect it. After yeah, that, uh, it's covered after this. 
，再说说。别说白相逢，做梦也在不变。苦嗯、I think it's interesting. Do you shoot this series of pictures uh early in the morning? I think it's uh, uh midnight. Oh midnight. Okay, 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 okay. Oh, so okay, yeah. If you are interested in this series of picture, okay, you can always uh. Go with to visit my uh uh my page my Facebook okay it's all this all, all these pictures is, is there these pictures are is from the uh, XD four okay let's go back to the uh, question that uh, uh uh a friend asked that uh do I really when I take photograph do I shoot in black and white mode I don't do that okay uh, I like to look at the real world. Okay. Okay. okay because um i would like to feel the uh the uh, atmosphere the environment so even though we are looking into the electronic viewfinder now okay especially the xt series okay so but uh, i prefer to look at the real thing okay the color the whatever is real thing like what is happening there and um, after that okay because i know when i take this series of photography the the end result is black and white photograph. So when I shoot, I follow the uh, so-called rules of taking uh, black and white yeah, photograph. Okay, yeah, actually, yeah. black and white photograph is some, not something like someone took a picture, go home, look uh, when they open up in the uh, uh, post processing software, look at it. Oh, color seems not nice. Try convert black and white and see see. Okay, it's not okay. that 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 to to make a black and white uh, 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 image. Okay, those uh, uh, maybe you can get to convert a black and white photo, but it's not actually a black and white uh, uh, so called uh, nice uh, work, black and white work. So uh, I don't shoot in that. Uh, I post processing it most of the time. Uh, I should draw. It's, um, it's just that when I get the export tree, uh, at, the, at, the, at that moment, we can't have the raw converter, so I should draw and JPEGs. I see, I see, I see. But SD4, I think you also agree that the like uh, for high ISO, the noise control is also better, right? Yeah. Uh, actually, it's, it, uh, there's no, not big difference with XT3, okay? Because they're having the same sensor and the uh, same uh, processor. It's just only that um, you can able to shoot handheld uh in a uh, much lower uh shutter speed okay uh, because most of the uh fixed lenses especially uh is compensated uh, up to 6.5 stops okay yeah. so uh i mean of course provided the subject is not really a moving fast kind of thing okay so it's like a running subject a low light you <laughs> like to shoot with the image stabilizer of course it's not practical it's not it's not, it's not that way but now SD4 in Malaysia, uh, can the consumers get it from the stores already or pre-order online or things like that? Uh, actually, we started the pre uh, pre-order last last month. Okay, ah, okay, okay. and uh, the customers, uh, they are they all got the uh, first batch of uh, pre-orders XT4. Okay, one of my friend. Uh, when he got its pre-order with all those pre-order uh, gifts, okay, ah. he, he was very excited and he just shot, take his handphone and shoot all those pre uh, uh, pre-order free gift and show me. And then he showed me one thing because in Malaysia when you do pre-order XD4, you get a sixteen fifty-five mark. Ah, okay. okay. So uh, when he showed me the picture, I said, "Hey, you 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 bought a new sixteen fifty-five? He said, "No, this is a mark." <laughs> so it's very, ex uh, very excited and uh, you can't wait to go out and shoot. I said, oh, no, 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 you can't because now it's locked up, locked down. Okay, so what should I do? Uh, shoot at home. Okay, so try 
because uh, 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 all these 50 over days, uh, I've been shooting uh, tabletops, uh, food kind of thing. My friends are going to, they want to do that, that kind of thing uh, also. So I said, uh, why don't sometimes, uh, because we shoot tabletops uh, at home, we don't use fresh, we use natural light, those kind of thing. And when in, in the evening, your shutter speed will go very, very low. So if you're lazy to use a tripod, try the X-T4. Okay, yeah. with the yeah. stabilizer, you, you do that, you know, your new camera just explode with it, just play with it, right? Yeah, it's, good. it's good that Malaysia side, you guys, the sales are already on already. Likewise for Singapore as well. Singapore, mm -hmm. uh, uh, consumers can actually buy from all the authorized dealer. Uh, mm -hmm. Also online, mm -hmm. because now it's a lockdown period, period mm -hmm. um, the, the cameras will be delivered to your doorstep. So it's yeah. <laughs> the is quite good. Eh? It's very good. Eh? So maybe Thomas, uh, maybe yeah. but now um, uh, uh, your Cambodia photos, right? I think uh -huh. uh, there was something wrong, so we cannot really see the images. Maybe you can share some of the Cambodia pictures also. We yeah. can, just know when I, when I share the pictures, I can't see. Uh, just now we cannot really see the Cambodia pictures. So maybe you just take a look at the, at the pictures. Okay, go back to this. Okay, in the meantime, uh, this there's a question for you, Thomas. Uh, yeah. They are asking, since you are using prime lenses most of the time in low light, um, mm. prefer to fully utilize the largest aperture or crack up the ISO? Um, okay, so everything there's a limitation, okay? There will be a limitation. Okay, let's say when I uh, went okay, to... Uh, as you're talking about this, right? Uh, just mm. show uh, Cambodia pictures, yeah. Okay, so how am I going to do it? Okay, this is, is this, this one? Yeah. Okay. So, you can show so, the images, yeah. Uh, so, uh, um, so, either way, right, whether you boost up your ISO or your you uh, open up your largest aperture. So, uh, I prefer to open up my aperture over um iso but so-called iso that i use during low light so far with the xt3 Pro 3 of course the latest xt4 i set my auto iso i, I should be auto iso sometimes uh, most of the time okay especially when i i, I shoot it on street okay doing documentaries both under low light i shoot with uh auto iso maximum 6004 okay, okay. and okay. um uh, minimum shutter speed I set, set it at uh, 1 over 60 those kind of thing okay so I uh, actually I will open up my aperture rather than uh, let the ISO to to, to uh, really boost too high okay? okay to take care of the image quality but some of my friend okay uh, or uh, some students that will ask me so if you uh, open up your aperture Let's say I'm I'm shooting with the uh, twenty three one four, okay. The largest aperture is one point four. So when you open up your one point uh, uh wide open one point four, so how about your image? Okay, it's going to be a uh, 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 very narrow depth of field. So there's one thing in uh, uh this is uh, physics. I'm not a scientist, but I learned from uh, uh the uh, expert that uh, they told uh, me that when you okay when your lens focus at infinity okay, okay? so the there's the, the 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 picture you got is actually something like a 2d you you you, you don't have the uh, so-called three dimension kind of view anymore let's say you know, when you uh focus at infinity you put 1.4 okay the subject of course when you focus at infinity mean the, the subject is is the distance of your lens to the subject of course, it's more than the uh, uh, the focus distance of your your lens, right? So you 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 should focus at infinity. So when you focus at infinity, you shoot at one point four. It's not actually you you don't, don't really get so narrow of that depth of view. Those kind of thing. Okay. okay. Let's say when uh, I I uh, last time when I I think three years ago when I shoot in Chengdu the Guan Yin Ge, the tea house okay? Okay. okay this tea house we need to go in to shoot early morning uh, yep. this this Chengdu Guan Yin Ge in the 
uh, morning, let's say about around 9 to 10, p 10 a.m., 9 to 10 a.m., there's a lot of photographers, a lot of uh, photography trips, photographer coming in. The uh, Lao Si, those guys, they, uh, uh, the tour leader will bring them. Okay, yeah. so really from um, 9 to 10 a.m., the tea house is full of photographers. So if you need to shoot something that you want, you need to go really early, about 4 something, 4 something a.m. To wait for the, the boss to open up the shop, do the preparation. So it's really, really dim, low light. So most of the time, I would rather uh, uh, put up my uh, uh, 1.4 lens. Okay, when I have the distance uh, between myself and the subject, I will always shoot at 1.4. Okay, it doesn't matter. You won't feel like oh, it's only the the, the face sharp and then everything else got blur. It won't happen. Uh, especially you shoot with a white. Let's say a six. 16 m or 23 again you should at 1.4 or you have a, 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 a distance that your lens is focused at, at infinity you don't, you don't get those so-called oh or only get the face uh, or the head sharp and everything blur off uh, you don't, don't yes, that's that. why I like the 23 1.4 bro because somehow because it's 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 23 mm is white so even if mm. I shoot one four right the mm. first area will not be that obvious also so yeah yeah I mean, I mean if you, with the 16 you need to really go close to your to your to your yeah. subject I mean your focus point should be really really close okay then you'll have the uh, so-called uh bouquet thing there actually but uh, for, for, for me okay I love the uh, uh Fuji film system is because of the depth of fuel as well um okay. because we are using the uh uh APSC sensor right so talk, talking about the depth of fuel um when most of the people down out there, most of the photographers out there, they will say, oh, when you use the APS-C uh, uh, format camera, 35 is e equivalent to 50, la? something like that, right? So it's actually, do, do the lens will convert from 35 to 50? It's not, it's only the view, angle of view. Ma. So uh, in that case, okay, if uh, before I, I, I convert to, to, to Fujifilm, I'm using full frame, of course, okay? so. Uh, let's say uh, uh, some uh, that particular scene that I love to get the depth of field of 5.6. Let's say uh, yeah. I'm using uh, 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 135 for man. Yeah. Okay, so um, in APSC, uh, actually, if I want to get back the same uh, depth of field kind of uh, feeling in that particular scene with the APSC format. I actually can shoot one stop wider. Let's say uh, instead of 5.6, I can shoot it at four. I gain one stop of light. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, uh, in low light, okay, talking about uh, ISO performance and plus this point that, okay, uh, why I convert from that 36 megapixel so called 135 format to uh, four different ways because that uh, from, from that time, because it's a 36 megapixel kind of thing okay the iso performance at that particular moment is not that good okay so i tried the uh xt1 at the time and i think i found that uh the xt1 uh iso performance is somewhere around one stop better than the uh the the, the, the 36 megapixel camera that i'm using and then because of the this theory also like instead of 5.6 i can shoot it with f4 so i can two stop lights from uh, to just okay yeah. Yeah. Camera, mm -hmm. hey, definitely, definitely, you know, i just thought of a question like i, I was talking about cambodia pictures just now right then of mm -hmm. course uh, i got another question uh another question that came out uh mm -hmm. you were asking you know uh uh do you actually you know with strangers as a street photographer as a travel photographer do you uh how do you uh get you get close to the subjects like the people that you choose uh, the people that you shoot do you actually get yeah. to know better or or big friends with them something like that right yeah yeah yeah, uh, yeah uh, especially the uh story kind of thing the serious kind of photograph let's say you, you just walk on the street you see someone you just take one or two pictures and go away sometimes you, you might just give a smile hi thank you Away. So, uh, but for those pictures that I, so, uh, I, I showed you just, I mean, the Cambodia series, that two series, 
uh, I make a lot of friends there. Okay, because when uh, uh, we go in to take pictures, uh, those are all strangers for, for the first time we go in, right? When you take a camera, walk around, and they will look at you, uh, what you want to do, so, those kind of things, right? So when we try so to... Yeah. Barrier. How do you break the barrier? Because like... Uh, first thing, uh, as I mentioned earlier, smile. smile. Yeah. Uh, look at people, smile, hi, hello, hello, those kind of things, okay? Uh, but... Uh, for uh, I give an advice for street photographer, or you would like to do uh, street photograph, or even documentary travel photograph to shoot people or whatever. First thing, don't offer streets to the children. Oh Please. yeah, yeah. Don't yeah. pay yeah. one dollar, one dollar to. Right. to I, I agree. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so um, to get close to people, okay, there are a few ways, okay. Uh, sometimes the easiest way or the uh, most common way is to offer them, uh, let's say, old man uh, uh, or uh, adult man, or uh, offer them a cigarette or whatever. Okay, <laughs> so a photographer, okay, that would like to travel uh, and explore uh, uh, around, even though you don't smoke, uh, bring one or two packs of cigarettes <laughs> with you and can offer to, to those people that they can smoke. Uh, they will smoke, you can shoot also, right? <laughs> so beside, beside that, okay, so when you walk around, it's with a smiling face, okay, try to be kind to people. So um, after my first trip to Cambodia, Phnom Penh, I learned something, okay. When we reach look the location, when we reach the place that we are looking for, okay, let's say I want to go to the railway tracks uh, to take the photograph. We don't just go, wow, finally, I get, get to this place already. Uh, take out my camera, start, boom, 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 shoot. Don't do that. Okay, so when we reach the location, okay, uh, and finally, our photographer will really excited to get, get out your take, take out your camera, but walk around, okay, try to hi hi with people, or talk to people. If some sometimes you might uh 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 get into some good people, they were hi friend, where are you from? Those kind of thing, right? So you just yeah. some 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 of them will actually invite you to sit down, I sit down, okay, have a coffee, okay, slum area, okay. Yeah. When they pass you a, a cup of coffee, how? Drink uh, or not? <laughs> this uh, is a very good question, eh? Uh, I think you still have to drink, lah. Do you drink? I I I I I drink because yeah. they don't take out the coffee from somewhere, ma. Okay, right. they have a, they have a cup and then they pour the hot coffee into the cup. Hot so, water, uh, uh, okay. Hot, okay, I will pour hot water into the glass and pass it to you. Just Drink law, okay. Yep. They are not yep. let's say in Cambodia, they are not passing some uh a weird kind of uh salad like like uh, like <laughs> those, uh, 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 the, the salad to you. So it's just uh, a co co coffee, just drink, okay. And while all those children, uh because children they 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 they, they love to or, or they are very curious uh why this big guy come uh, why, uh, they will start to go around you, right? So from there, we can start to play with them. I like to play with children, yeah. okay? So I like to uh, play with children and uh, try to uh, make some funny face, make them laugh or something like that. So you will get along, okay? You will get along. And after yeah. that, yeah. then uh, we talk to the, the, the people or we just simply take up the camera and just we are playing with the children. So we'll take, take, take some photograph and show them. Uh, they, from there, they will start laughing they will just look at their face and uh, those kind of things. And from there, some of them might start to climbing up to you, climb on, the, up to, on top of your hand, playing with your hair, right? pulling your camera strap, so let them play with you and you play with them. I, I think that's a good advice. I, I, I guess, I mean like yourself also, we bring our people overseas for workshops and things like that. I, I guess the the one thing that we notice amongst uh, hobbyists is that mm. sometimes do street photography, they, like what you mentioned just now, they go to a place, but well, very cut off, take out all the camera, shoot, 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 shoot. Mm. They don't make, uh, they don't make the environment comfortable to them. Mm. You see, always, first thing that comes to mind is, we mm. have to be comfortable in the environment, but what is more important is that environment has to be comfortable with us, because mm. we are injured in that new place. So mm. people, if that place is very touristy, maybe mm. they are, uh, but some yeah. places they are not, not touristy and they are not used to you know people doing all these things. So uh -huh. what you can do like you know uh, talk to them, let the environment seep in and get comfortable with me. And after uh -huh. that, 
you know, things will just flow very naturally. For me, another thing that I like to do is um, I like to bring the Instax camera, the Instax yeah. printer camera. The Instax printer, yeah. Yeah, I bring the SP3. So sometimes I print one or two pictures to them, right? Mm. Then after a lot of them will start to crowd around you and sometimes they... Mm. they uh, uh, shoot me, shoot me, give me one picture, yeah. something like that, right? You yeah. get a chance. Oh. Nice. Right. Yeah. So although I don't want to create pictures of them looking at the camera too much, but after a while, because they're comfortable, right? When I go around, um, mm. they will not really get to annoyed with my presence so which is yeah. good they get used to it they get used to you 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 being around right so uh that's another tip that um uh, when we go to something like a new places new place okay uh, we start to uh to to not to spoke the personal or the, the people yeah. down there so make your camera as simple as possible <laughs> yeah uh, take off the lens hood whatever yeah. just um my friend asked me why you downgrade from <laughs> uh, the N35 format to APS-C. Uh -huh. I'm not downgrading. I'm getting more pictures because this thing look like toy camera. Correct. Okay? Uh, but it don't look like a toy camera. I don't look like a, a professional photographer with a big arsenal that yeah. it really sometimes it, it looks offensive, you know, to some Correct. people, in some area. So when, when I take care of this kind of small camera, like a toy, okay. Yep. They just be as, as, as a uh, normal tourist. They will, uh, you get easier. I just give you an example in uh, Kuala Lumpur, Petaling Street. Okay, yeah. one uh, small alley that's uh, is going into the, uh, is a uh, is a uh, pasar. Okay, there's one. There are few uncle there that are selling fish and chicken or whatever. They don't like photographers to take their photos. Okay, okay? So when you go in, you will get scored or whatever. But one day I bring in the. That time is still the Expo one. Uh -huh. Yeah, okay, I, I go, I go in, I hang my camera in front of me. I don't show because I know that camera, that the uncle, yeah. they're, they're happy. They don't like people to take their cameras. I meant to yeah. take their photos. So we are hanging this, uh, uh, the Expo one in front of me. Uh, I just stand there and look at them. They bang, 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 do their work, they're chopping chicken, uh, fish. Okay. So I think after 10 minutes, something like that, one uncle, okay, the, 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 the uncle that's selling fish asked me, hey, you still use film camera uh. <laughs> not even change digital camera very advanced thing or you still because this thing the expo one of course same similar like this and this thing looks like a very old retro camera so that you still use film camera uh. then you know what uh, uh, my answer yes i i never cheat uncle uh, because it's fuji film camera man. <laughs> so, uh, uh, asked, you, do you still use film camera I said, yes uh -huh. uh, why you use film camera since everybody use digital? I said film different, okay? Because it, the old type of feeling of the film, whatever, whatever, whatever story I, I, I tell, I tell the uncle. And then uncle said, oh, like that, huh? So why you come here? Because I said this area, because I, I, I don't think after you plan to retire, your son will take over, okay? So this place will be vanishing soon, okay? Sooner or later. So I, I try to come in to take some photograph, okay, to record down this place. And then uncle suddenly said, shoot me. Then I start to shoot. It takes no one. <laughs> There's one story <laughs> la, that I'm right. sorry. Like, <laughs> Beg him, la, like, ask, let him ask you to shoot. You don't have to ask for permission. Let him ask you to yeah, shoot. I'm just saying, if you, if you shoot him without his permission, or you, you even though you ask that uncle don't like, right? Uh, if yeah. you don't don't ask, uh, if you don't even, even ask, the uncle might chop you instead of the chicken. That, that's a very good trick also. And also another thing is that I like to use, okay, for me, I always feel that when you take street photos, when you always do this, right? Is mm -hmm. it obvious? photo so sometimes i shoot from the screen no? so mm. people will be somehow people don't feel that you are shooting when i hold my camera at least mm. then, then i just shoot no? i just mm. shoot so obvious people uh -huh. don't even think actually mm. so especially for places that is more hostile like uh 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 in morocco in north korea mm. where people don't really like you to take photos um mm. morocco the kids might you know sometimes throw things at you so so when you shoot at like this, it's not obvious. So they are so somehow it's okay. You know, you don't get much of a problem. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, so because, you got yeah. uh any more photos to share? 
No, no, I, I don't uh, prepare uh, some photos today. Okay. I just, uh, okay. Uh, uh, I thought you were trying to say something again. Uh, no, I mean, uh, another thing is that um, because uh, I think, I mean, last time when uh, this Fujifilm camera that we can actually connect our smartphone with the uh, camera that you can remote shoot from, from, your, from your phone, right? Yeah. So yeah. it's it's another it's another tool lah uh, when you uh doing in a uh, documentary or streets like some sensitive uh location. Okay, one of my uh story in Cambodia also because I did a few stories in Cambodia. One of my stories in Cambodia uh, is the uh, illegal minings. Okay, they they take gemstone illegally. Okay. okay, and then uh, uh, after they they have those stones, and someone will come and buy from them. But that guy will give will offer very very low low price, and of course okay. illegally buy from them. And and when, when I'm shooting the story of this uh, so called illegal mining in uh, Cambodia, uh, the whole story uh, is around there. It's only one thing I can't get you still after they have the stone, someone will buy from them. This is the story of that so called illegal mining man. Okay. okay, so uh, but they don't allow me to take photograph and they sell and buy those kind of thing happen happening. Okay, openly actually actually opening. Uh, you can stand there and see, but you can't take photo. And don't shoot, don't shoot because that that guy don't like his face to be exposed. So what I do? Uh, sometimes I say don't shoot if that person don't like or whatever. Okay, we don't shoot. But this uh is something related to my story. I I need to have at least one photo that shows uh is 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 on the trade that the gemstone so i hang my camera on with a strap okay so just like that no? the camera will, will compose for me ma i'm not as I'm looking at the phone ma. yeah uh, i look at the phone like something i'm playing my phone just chup, 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 one two shot go okay, I, it's a good move yeah Okay, yeah. but until today I st still haven't show those photo yet. I guess the whole series is not uh, completed yet. Okay. Okay. Another yeah. question that just came in: If uh, mm -hmm. you want to get a first mirrorless camera for street photography, mm -hmm. how would you choose between S Pro Two and XT Two? Well, I guess. I, do, do, uh. I guess we don't talk about. Already, <laughs> we talk about S Pro series and ST series, lah. Uh -huh. Because. because S Pro 2, S Pro ST2 is very old cameras. Maybe we talk mm -hmm. about S Pro series versus ST series for mm -hmm. uh, street photography purpose. Uh, maybe Thomas, mm -hmm. you have first between S Pro series and ST series. Which one would you prefer for street photography? Okay, but the first thing that I I'd like to share with uh, Jasmine Fu. Okay, so why uh, not X Pro 2 or T2? Okay, because T3 Pro 3, you have a brand new sensor which is a, a BSI sensor. Okay, it's really good in low light condition. Okay, perform very well with uh, ISO. Even though uh, I just share with you, uh, if you happen to see the uh, long exposures uh, photos that I took, okay, I love to shoot long exposures, um, especially uh, in the coastline of Malaysia. Um, I shoot with uh, 16 stop of ND. So most of the time, I uh, the long exposures is around four minutes to eight minutes. Okay, when you shoot with the old sensor, okay, the third generation uh, kind of thing, okay, the minute that the sensor in the X Pro Two and the T Two, okay, you tends to get uh, hot pixels, okay, very strong uh, 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 noise if you expose I mean, the long exposure more than three minutes. Once uh, the X-T3 came out, okay, I mean the X-T3, X-4, 3, X-T4, and even the uh, X-100V is, is having the uh, BSI sensor. So uh, the first thing I'm going to try out the X-T3 when it came out uh, two years ago, straight away I bring it to East Coast, uh, Tenggano, Malaysia, to try the X, uh, I mean the long exposure. If long exposure, no problem, means this camera is perfect. Okay, <laughs> and I, the X three for me. So uh, when I reached the location, I compose everything. I put on my sixteen stop ND filter. I just okay shoot for eight minutes, few few shots. Okay, I don't really actually let the sensor to rest for one or two minutes after one shot. Okay, just uh 
uh, what you call surprisingly the, the picture is very 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 clean okay so i just uh, uh, immediately report back to uh, fuji for measure that this is great okay it's actually totally different sensor all right so not mean to yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. okay so come back to the question pro or series okay? if, if uh, exposure mainly mm. for photography between the mm. pro the st series mm -hmm. okay so uh for the uh, pro or t series okay it it depends on yourself huh? if you are uh you are using i saw in the question getting a first mirrorless camera that means you are having a camera now is it an slr let's say you are you're used to the slr you 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 confirm to look at the camera you 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 are, you are used to look at the center okay get the xt series okay you like, like to uh explore something new okay you don't actually uh there's nothing that this is good for or that is good for this kind of thing okay it's whether you feel comfortable when you hold the camera okay so whether you you feel good when you hold the camera and take photograph it okay let's say uh the uh, uh xt series is something similar to to your slr kind of thing the, the control whatever is you know, once you hold it on your hand you can start shooting whereas uh, don't actually try to be something like me because i used to be a gas before you know what is gas huh? you know what is gas huh? i assume <laughs> so so because of street photographer should look like street photographer okay don't actually go into those things okay uh once you hold that xt series that you uh, you you feel comfortable with it that's your camera that's the camera that suit you and with that camera it's just a tool okay and with that camera you can go and take street photography shoot models macro uh, shoot food at home whatever it's just a tool right I, yeah i think yeah. what you know, okay. For me also, uh, whatever is comfortable, I, I guess mm -hmm. I enjoyed the S Pro series, mm -hmm. but frankly, I have never owned an S Pro camera, mm -hmm. but I own an ST2, ST3, ST1, ST2, ST3, ST4, mm -hmm. I never own a Pro series, because mm -hmm. for me, I think I'm so comfortable with the ST series, oh, even though I agree that I love the S Pro series, but mm -hmm. In terms of you know buying the camera and things like that, I mm. think I, I will put my money in something that I'm more comfortable with. Unless of course mm. if I spare spare cash, I don't mind. I'll get all the pro and SD series doesn't matter. But if I've got limited mm. uh, resources, then mm. uh, I'm probably more comfortable with SD series, like what uh, mm. Tom mentioned. Whatever you're comfortable. Mm. With. So same thing. I always tell people when they buy cameras, should always go and go to the shop, play with it first, and see what mm. you're comfortable with. Because we, mm. we, what we say, right? If you're mm. not comfortable holding it right and shooting uh -huh. with it, uh -huh. uh, then you know also no uh, use. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, don't choose a camera because of someone said this is a good camera. Yeah. Okay. Now there's nothing so called lousy camera anymore. Okay. So don't, don't let's say let's say you 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 feel one camera. This let's say you feel this camera is very comfortable. You love it. Okay. But your friend said ah this is not good. That one good. So you buy that one. No? okay but when you shoot you don't feel comfortable okay yeah. you don't actually concentrate in shooting you don't actually have creativity you know actually to take uh, uh to take good photographs i don't mean uh, i don't want to talk those theory anyway or, or, or quotes anymore, because i don't feel like uh, uh, shoot, uh taking photograph a beautiful photograph is good uh, a beautiful photograph is not actually good right I, uh, talk about that late, uh, next time if you do if you do have a chance okay so a lot of friends will ask me uh what lens you use to shoot what camera body you use to shoot again okay, they, they actually what lens you use to shoot what camera body you use to shoot is not important you can have, have to look deeper into photography the lens is not important it's just a tool the camera body is not important it's just a tool look deeper look inside the lens camera body the back of the camera this is determine how good is the photograph. It's not this. Okay. I guess equipment wise, we can only say the pros and cons of the mm. different equipment. But in the end, uh, mm. 
depends on each individual so what they like mm. Uh, mm. maybe uh, uh, to as uh, we should be ending soon but I just share a set of photos uh, just to mm. show ideas behind some of the photos mm -hmm. so what I have here is um, uh, more about framing so um, uh, I, I used to have people asking me, oh, you know, street photography, it happens so fast. How will you frame and things like that? Uh, how can you frame so fast? How can you frame so, so quickly? I guess it's all comes with experiences and um, uh, shoot more. Lah. The more you shoot, the better you are. Yeah, like, they always say, yeah when you shoot 10,000 times, right? Mm -hmm. uh, 10,000 pictures, you definitely will get better. So mm -hmm. but to show some ideas about framing, what... Mm -hmm. uh, uh, what 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 uh, I say about framing? So, so of course, this picture besides framing is also about lighting. So mm -hmm. again, I saw the frame. I I anticipate that you know they will get into the light. So that's nice to get the light. So I got you know frame by the shadow and frame by the wall at the side. So the next picture, uh, this was in Morocco. Of course, this was the picture we used for the advertisement. Uh, it was quite lucky because again, like I mentioned in Morocco, people don't really like photography i mean even kids they might school you also so um, i was walking in the streets then i saw these two kids sharing the apple i just framed them very nicely with the wall as well the blue walls so uh, some people might just use a 70 200 for example to shoot a close-up but i always tell uh, you know uh, street photos we try not to do too many close-up there's more street uh, street portrait but i like to shoot more of the environment as well so uh, you know frame them very nicely with the wall, with the pavement and everything. So again, um, you can see the little girl by the side coming off of the wall. So this was a bit more friendly uh, uh, kid uh, when she saw me taking out the camera and she was running around. So I just wait there and when she pop up the head, I just take a shot and I just move off. So um, science is about that moment, the anticipation, the luck and things like that. Mm. So um, uh, this was in North Korea. Again, for... Mm. Travel photos, you know, in general, I like to show people where the place is. So I love mm -hmm. the lighting, I love the silhouette and things like that. So, but mm -hmm. just nice, the, the, the pictures of uh, Kim il -sung was behind as well. Uh, uh, so people, when I look at it, they will know that this is actually in North Korea because of the uh, two uh, uh, pictures at the back. But mm -hmm. um, all the lighting and the silhouette, it makes a very interesting picture. Mm -hmm. Then another one I have here is, uh, again, a uh, show of luck. I saw the old man there with a light on his face. So I just waited a while for, you know, just nice this guy load up the things on the lorry and mm -hmm. uh, the old man was framed just nicely between the hands. So uh, just get the shot. Um, framing again in the train, uh, framing of one person behind and mm -hmm. another person at the front to show a, a bit of tension in the pictures again. And uh, another picture, Sri Lanka, um, frame the two gentlemen and just nice this lady walk past and the gentleman was looking at her. You know, it creates very interesting uh, images mm -hmm. of the frame. Mm -hmm. So, uh, in the streets, um, in the dark, uh, this was a subway. I love mm -hmm. how the frame is. Uh, you can still see the light on the lady's face over here. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's all just very nice and interesting. Uh, mm -hmm. Sri Lanka as well. Instead of shooting just the old gentleman mending the shoes, I framed him between the two guys and just nice somebody was walking down so it forms a triangle again, uh, mm -hmm. which always look interesting. Uh, Morocco also framed with the shadows, light and uh, silhouettes. So very careful about what they wear because for example, the two people at the left hand corner, they are wearing black so they appear as silhouette whereas the person in the middle is wearing white. So, you know, the contrast is there. Uh, the light and the shadows, everything comes out very nicely. So these are what are the things that I look out for. So yeah, this is a bit about framing and things like that. So um, mm -hmm. I always tell people for street photography, maybe maybe uh, just look at all the different things and 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 shoot more, and you should get it. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe for the viewers, maybe if they have uh, even after this session, they can type some more questions on the Facebook page if they have, we try to answer as well. But mm -hmm. to round off, um, uh, uh, Thomas, do you have any any advice for for 
for street photography in general. Like if I'm new in street photography, I I after the the all this lockdown, lockdown lifted, uh -huh. I can't wait to cover. So, but I don't know what to shoot, how to shoot. Uh, just uh, one sentence uh, uh, advice for people. What 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 can they look out for when they shoot? Uh, go to look for likes. Okay, so let's say uh, 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 an area that their lights coming down or shooting on a wall that, that creates a uh, contrast, okay, light and shadow. Look, go to look for things like that. And after that, you when you found those things, okay, so stay there or immediately there, there's something happening, bicycle, people walk by or whatever. Okay, try to look, look into those things. William shows uh, a, a lot of uh, a good example of light and shadows. Okay, so I think to start with, uh, it's better to, uh, in this way that uh, you, you look for a good background first. Because most of, of the uh, newcomers in photography, they no, no, don't, don't look at the background. They always uh, focus on their subject, main subject, and they never look at the look back. I look at the back wow. so suddenly the let's say it is taking a portrait of the, the, the guy of the tree from the from the from the head or something okay. yeah so, uh -huh. i guess okay my last yeah. advice uh in addition to what thomas has said is mm -hmm. really to uh shoot more when you guys travel uh firstly respect the local people mm -hmm. and uh, don't be shy or so uh shoot mm -hmm. more uh, mm -hmm. I realize a lot of people are still very careful in the in the number of shots they take. But I always tell mm -hmm. people, just, you know, uh, at most, you know, the more you shoot, the better you get anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so yeah. respect, shoot more, mm -hmm. and uh, enjoy yourself. And in addition to what Thomas has said, uh, yeah. yeah, stay safe also because uh, when you shoot, shoot on uh, on the street, okay. Pub openly but public places uh, please uh, do do take care of your valuables okay take, uh, and stay safe because some some of my friends when when we go to take a uh, photograph on the street because of they like to compose something and uh, they will, will move around when the camera on their face they don't even look uh, and yeah. suddenly they will just, they just go go back go back until they go on the street very important advice stay safe yeah uh, yeah, you have to be safe. Uh, you're not because you, that, that picture doesn't work your life, right? Sure, sure. Uh -huh. Okay. Ken, so uh, we will end it off here. Uh, thank you very much to Thomas. And uh, thank you for all the viewers who have been watching us for the last uh, one hour plus. Uh -huh. and, uh, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, one hour 45. <laughs> Uh, we uh, of course Fujifilm Singapore definitely will try our best to have more broadcasts with you guys. Um, mm. you know, in Singapore, our lockdown is until first of June, so mm. we start at home. So mm. we want to share more of all these things with everybody as also. Yeah. Mm. So thank you again. Thank you very much to Thomas and thank you for all the viewers. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, see you next time. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. You yeah, the, the one question I like to answer. Oh, Where okay. I get my t-shirt from? Uh, this is <laughs> SK3 Fujifilm Malaysia. Okay, it's by a, a local Malaysian designer when we do promotion. Okay, Fujifilm Malaysia. <laughs> okay, okay, lah. Okay, thank you very much. See you. Thank you very much. Okay. Good night. Bye -bye. Thank you very much.